Hello and welcome to the ASAP Vlog series. My name is Chrissy Civic. I'm a certified career coach and a professional development trainer, and I'm also a very proud former administrative professional. In this video, I'm going to share some strategies for success when you're studying Module 3 of the PACE certification program. Module 3 covers the essential and ever-evolving topic of technology. You'll notice that this module contains a lot of foundational information. It's intended to help you develop a broad technical acumen. As a PACE certified administrative professional, you need to feel comfortable and confident when using technology in the workplace. And that includes using new and emerging technology, which is discussed a lot in this module. This is one area of the business world that is rapidly changing all the time. It's not enough to master a single piece of equipment or a computer program. By this time next year, that particular thing could be obsolete and you may be forced to learn a new one. So it's much more important that you are tech savvy, meaning you're able to learn new technology quickly because you have a strong foundational understanding of how it works. That's what this module is all about. In this video series, I'm walking you through three steps to success for each module. The first step is to self-assess. Then we focus on key concepts and terminology. This module, like the others, has a heavy emphasis on terminology. Using the right words in the right way is especially important when we're discussing technology in the workplace. And finally, we'll discuss how you can apply the learning to real life. So let's talk about the first part of the process, which is self-assessment. On the following slides, we're going to look at the main topics of the technology module. As we go through them, I want you to consider your comfort level with them on a scale from one to 10, where one is, I have no idea what this even means. And 10 is, I'm already an expert at this. To help in your self-assessment process, you may also want to consider these questions. How much study have you done on this topic already? Have you read books on specific elements of technology? Have you attended workshops or classes? How much hands-on experience do you have with this topic? If you're a working administrative professional, You've probably used technology in various forms throughout your career, but how comfortable are you with it? If you haven't done any outside study and you're basing your knowledge on firsthand experience, that is perfectly fine. But recognize that you might have a little more to learn when it comes to knowing the specific terminology and names of the concepts you have perhaps been naturally employing in your work. And lastly, what feedback have you gotten from others regarding your abilities with this topic? Have people told you you're a tech whiz? Or have you become the unofficial tech support person for your department? Or maybe you've received feedback from others that pointed out certain weaknesses in your technological capabilities. All right, you may want to pause the video and pull out a piece of paper to jot down your self-assessment rating as we go through each content area. The technology module has a total of five sections. So on the following slides, you'll see each section noted at the top with its section number. Beneath each header, you'll also see the main subsections. Let's go through each, and if you need to pause the video to think about your comfort level with a certain topic area, please do so. There is no need to rush this process. Section one covers digital literacy, which includes understanding hardware, modern office environments, including the smart office, video conferencing best practices, and tech gadgets, trends in data storage, and trends in artificial intelligence, which includes a discussion on the Internet of Things, robotics, and XR, or extended reality tools for business. Section two is a short one. It's all about operating systems, and it has one subsection talking about operating system features. 
Section 3 discusses software, and it includes information on intellectual property, updates and troubleshooting, software suites and licenses, and the Google Workspace. Section 3.4 is all about digital research. The subsections include browser fundamentals, internet research, and e-commerce. Lastly, Section 5 covers business digital communication and this section probably covers the most ground. The section includes subsections on email, business social media best practices, technology and travel planning, security and privacy, cyber attacks and cybersecurity, really important and interesting stuff there, social media and privacy, and internet etiquette. So you definitely can see here that this is building on things that you've already learned in the communication module, as well as the task and project management module. All right, that's it for the main topics and subtopics in the technology module. Looking back at your rating sheet, I want you to consider these questions. Overall, how do you feel about the module as a whole? What areas do you think that you need to spend a little more time on? What areas are already your strengths? You now have some really good information to help you figure out how to allocate your time and attention for studying. Now that we're done with the self-assessment, it's time to focus on key concepts and terminology. This is all about breaking your study materials down into bite-sized pieces, making them more manageable for studying. If you've already watched any of the other training videos in this series, you already know why the terminology component is so important. It's not just about understanding the concept, but to reiterate, we want to make sure that all PACE certified admins are using a shared language. How we speak about our work plays an important role in how we think about it and how others think about it. We want you to use professional, consistent vocabulary that accurately describes your role. Let's look at just a small handful of the key concepts and terms from the technology module. To be clear, this is nowhere near all of them. This is just a small selection of some of the important ones. It should give you an idea of the types of things that we want you paying attention to. So for example, in the top row, you see types of data storage devices, types of software, and forms of malware. Beneath the concept, I've also provided the section number for your reference. You are welcome to pause the video and take a screenshot of this for your own use while you're studying. But again, remember, this is not a complete list. You'll want to go through the module and make your own list of key concepts and terminology throughout each section. Here's the good news. The key terms are often bolded throughout the technology module, making them really easy to identify. You're probably going to end up with a list of dozens of key terms. These are really the things that deserve your attention while studying. Finally, the third step is the incredibly important application piece. We want you to fully integrate your learning. And to do that, you need to apply what you've learned to your own work situations. Again, if you've watched any of the other training videos in this series, you already know that my favorite strategy to help with learning applications is to ask yourself questions specifically related to what you're studying. Questions are a surprisingly powerful cognitive tool. When we plant a question in our minds, it's a signal to the brain to get to work thinking about it. And ultimately, that thought process can shift our behaviors as well. So let's look at some examples of the kinds of questions you might want to ask yourself as you're reviewing the Module 3 study materials. In Section 3.1.1.1 about modern office environments, you may ask yourself, how well do my team and I currently follow the video conferencing best practices provided? 
and what can we do to improve? In section 3.3.2 about software suites and licensing, you may ask, what software systems and applications do we currently use and how well do they meet our current needs? In section 3.5.2 on business social media best practices, you may ask, how does my organization currently use social media and are we following established best practices? In section 3.5.4 on security and privacy, you may ask, does my company have an acceptable use policy? And if so, what's included in it? In section 3.5.5 on cyber attacks and cybersecurity, you may ask, what measures are we taking to protect the integrity and privacy of our business information? Are there additional things we should be doing? In section 3.6.1 on cloud computing, you may ask, how has the cloud changed the way we do business and what are the benefits? Once you come up with a question, your brain immediately starts trying to find an answer. You can discuss your answers with a colleague, a mentor, a friend, or a trusted advisor. That's a great way to solidify your learning and increase your retention even more. Or you can spend some time writing your answers out, like journaling, which is something I personally find to be really useful. Or you can even just silently meditate on the questions while engaging in other daily activities. It really depends on your style. Everyone is different, so do what works best for you. I hope you found these strategies useful. Remember that it does no good to accumulate all of this great knowledge if you don't actually use it. As you learn new things throughout your PACE studies, share information with others in your organization. Make suggestions, improve processes, find opportunities to put your knowledge into action. That's when all of this work really pays off, when you're able to provide even greater value in your role. That is what PACE certified admins are able to do. Once again, I'm Chrissy Civic, presenting on behalf of the American Society of Administrative Professionals. Thanks for watching.